So, as you see by the video title, somebody made the mistake of having me on their show again. Um, and while it went pretty well, despite the fact that uh, the internet companies possibly actually hate me and want me silenced, so they're not going to uh, let my words <laughs> come through clearly the whole time. Um, yeah, that sort of thing. You know, um, it's fucking hilarious that I got fiber optic internet so that it would be faster. And it is in upload and sometimes in download. But then sometimes neither are fast and it just fucking shuts. So that's fucking stupid. You know, I'm going to make a video on that at some point on how the ISP monopoly is bad. Um, anyway, point is that this one was about how to, um, you know, get a libertarian social order in uh, Idaho with Idaho Joe and Kareem Mize. Um, I think that's how you pronounce his name. It's either Mize or Maze. So uh, to be incredibly specific, uh, you know, I like both these guys. Um, even though we don't always agree on everything, um, and there's an ANCAP flag in the video, yes, um, because this is a clip from his channel. So, uh, to any leftist in my audience who's upset by that, get me on an ANCOMS show and I will have their shit in my video, um, you know, providing that, like, I uh, approve of this person because some ANCAPs I would not agree to go on their show. Some ANCOMs I would not agree to go on their show. But the point is that I will go on pretty much most things that people will have me on. So, um, also I figured out what the uh, bad audio was, right? Um, so the bad audio was that I had two different mics enabled at the same fucking time. Um, so it was simultaneously, like, synced audio between the shitty webcam built-in mic and my actually okay mic, which is why it didn't sound like complete garbage, but, uh, yeah, that, that, that was, that was fixed before, um, the recording today and shit like that. So anyway, this is a recording, uh, about, uh, politics, uh, and anarchy, and can you intersect the two? And uh, here's a little segment from that, because uh, I figure, you know, it's like a cross-promotion kind of thing. I get content, they get content, and uh, you guys get to be exposed to new people if you uh, d weren't already exposed to them. And the fact that I already basically talked for an hour and a half today means that I don't have to talk for yet more time. So, with that being said, here is that clip, and uh, preface be done. Uh, smash the fucking state, y'all. And you're also running for Congress, too, which I've yes. been checking out your website. One thing I actually like that, you, that you're doing, um, you actually and Jeremy are doing, is you have perspectives from both, like, right libertarianism, like, you know, Rothbard, Mises, Agorist, and some left libertarian ideas. I'm really curious how that will work in uh, Idaho specifically? Would, would it be some type of, are you trying to work to some, because I actually started, re you know, reading about different ideas and I, I could see mutualism working in that sense. And we talked about that before. So I was like, yeah. the main thing I was curious about. And it's real interesting because the dynamic here in Idaho, um, you know, Idaho was formed as a very strong union state back in the day. Yeah. You know, uh, Eugene Debs was a popular figure you know, in the early 1900s, uh, you know, working for unions, we actually had a union assassinate one of our governors for trying to be anti-union. <laughs> you know, one, one of those little things that nobody actually wants to talk about that much. You know, nobody could prove the conspiracy to assassinate him. You know, but uh, pretty much everybody understood that was what happened. You know, early mining unions, early uh, company towns. You know, we have like about seven or eight, you know, and one or two of them are actually still legacy towns after an ask, you know, such and such. You know, they're no longer strong company towns like they used to be. 
Mm -hmm. uh, simply because people got cars and they can drive 10 miles to the next store so they don't have to buy everything at the company store on credit. Um, but, you know, strong union, strong leftism. We also got an awful lot of government land here, a lot of commons, you know, that we use here in the state of Idaho for um, hunting, fishing, uh, logging. You know, these are areas, they're community property, they're community shared. You know, somebody manages it and says, you can come in, you can harvest so many elk, you can harvest so many deer. Uh, subsistence hunters, you know, we sell a lot of tickets every year. Um, How do you see kind of like breaking? Because to me, the problem, I'm not actually anti-union like I thought about this and I read about syndicalist, you know, literature. And I said, okay, yeah. fine. if the state were to go tomorrow, which it, it's not necessary, but the state will eventually fall. We're seeing these world economic yeah. people yeah. fall. We're even seeing the federal government be more and more inept, like the emperor has no clothes. And <laughs> me, I guess the problem I've worked through with you, you and Jeremy is like, okay, we have a lot of these strong, you know, left ideas on the union. They're probably not going to go full ANCAP or even agorist. But how do you pull some of these people and say, hey, the authoritarians are actually screwing you over and what you kind of want to do or what would be the best action to do is still have your leftist beliefs because i don't think they're going to get rid of it but let's work with other people who believe in decentralization on the right because i'm sure there's people like you and there's a lot of people in idaho even though there's some strong authoritarian right people you know with the religious stuff and some strong people with the unions um how do we bring those people together um, well, 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 I, I, I think the real thing is just given the opportunity for freedom of association. You know, in 1984, Idaho turned into a right to work state and what the right to work legislation did. Mind you, they had to write legislation, which right there is saying you just involve the state in the market. You involve the state in the labor market. Um, so they had to write legislation, which basically screwed up the degree of freedom of association. Mm -hmm. You know, you now had union negotiators that had to negotiate on behalf of non-union members when negotiating with a company or a corporation. It's like, but they didn't pay us to do, you know, so you got the whole free rider program going on. You know, um, and then there were some other things that basically favored corporations, you know, right to fire at will. Okay. You know, it's like, I don't like you. Bye. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting just, thing. I don't like you. Goodbye. That contract that you think we signed, well, it doesn't exist under state law. Um, of course, yeah, by the same uh, token, the employees are going, yeah, that contract you think we signed, it doesn't exist because I can quit at will too. And uh, that's one of the things we learned over COVID was an awful lot of people went, yeah, you're not paying me enough to put up with this garbage. Uh, you're not paying me enough to put up with risking myself on a COVID shot injury. You're not paying me enough, you know, to do remote work from home, you know, when I can easily find other work that will pay me even more to do it from home. Okay. Um, so here's a question about the unions, though, because it kind of okay. seems the unions are corrupt and they're working with the state like you know most unions have become the whole idea for me of unions actually is, is to you know if we're going to do this union is to have everybody have some type of a voice and you do that by like okay fine we'll have some type of de direct democracy in a decentralized fashion right so, is that more of a left idea it is and i'm on the right but I, I want to understand. Here, here's, so, one of here's where I can step in once he's done. Go, go for it. Go ahead. All right. So the first thing, you're running for Congress. You will yes. inherently be working with the state. Don't pretend that yes. unions doing it is better or worse. It's not. It's the same no, thing. No. It's using the state to get your means. So yes. let's just to be clear, lay that foundation. It's right. the same thing with corporations more oh, yeah. and more of which have subsumed by way of regulatory capture and you know the fact that they're corporations and corporations as samuel edward conk and the third well put it are imitations of the state and not the market because yeah. they since citizens united have been considered people in the fact of legal entities a separate 
person that uh, you can, <laughs> you know, contract with rather than a body of people who, with whom people can freely associate and dissociate. Rather than a body of people with whom somebody can freely associate and dissociate, my internet cut out for a second, um, this is a single person. And because of that, um, oftentimes the only way to get these state-created and state-protected institutions to do anything is to talk to the state. Almost like that's why you're running for Congress. So, like, just to be super specific here, if it's okay to run for Congress or any other political office, if it's okay to have political involvement, then it's okay to have a state-backed union. If it's not, then it's not. And we should abolish everything and have anarcho-syndicalist unions. But for now, you know, syndicalism could just be moving toward uh, slightly better worker conditions, like the recent Amazon union, right. where they were being treated like shit and, uh, you know, essentially being forced onto the old company town model because the small businesses that are really hurt by government legislation, not these mega corporations, those small businesses have been choked and destroyed and outsourced by government mm -hmm. regulation. So ultimately, right. from a position sympathetic to both ANCAPs and ANCOMs, mm -hmm. the state is the problem. Oh, and yeah. the state Without is what needs to go. And if we're going to say that, then we need to take the arms closest to the people first. Otherwise, the people won't have enough power to do anything about the root. And that means that it's totally fine to union organize if it's totally fine to run for office. Yeah. Think yeah. And you're not going to see any con conflict from me on that point. And I'm actually a strong supporter of the unions. Uh, I regularly contact with some of the unions that are still functional in Idaho, which is a right to work state. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm next to you. I'm in Washington. Right. Excellent. You know, we got the Meta Center, the Meta. It's Anarcho Coalition. Right? Yeah. Uh, we got the Meta Center that's being built out here in Idaho right now. It's being built in CUNA. And they actually had to call other states to bring in the electricians in order to wire the building because we don't have enough electricians in the electricians union and just in general in order mm -hmm. to provide all of the labor necessary for wiring the Meta Center. Yeah, and by the way, data. Meta Center is uh, is what? It's Meta as in Facebook? Yep, it's Meta as okay, in Facebook. Then, okay, then fuck the Meta Center. I hope they choke. <laughs> I agree. I agree. If, because if, if, well, if, well, it's if you want to say that this if you want to say that the state is so awful, then why are you saying woe is this company that was partially funded by the CIA Peter Thiel from the Bilderberg Group and Greylock Partners? Right? Why are we making everything tax free for them? Why did we tell why did we write legislation that said, Oh, Meta Saturn, you're coming in for your facility? We are going to make sure that there is no sales tax applied to the billions of dollars of you know servers you're going to be installing in there. Almost wait, wait, like wait, the wait, services wait. they provide the government are good enough for them, right? Uh, and then on top of that, you're looking at the situation where you know Idaho has inherent water rights, you know, that go back to the 1800s, you know, who has the water rights? Well, the thing is, is in order for the Meta Center to actually work with their water cooling system, they got to use water that somebody else has owned and the state basically eminent domain water rights to make sure that Meta Center had adequate water cooling. Yep. Rather than, you know, just saying you don't need another data center, maybe we shouldn't have the metaverse based with the CIA company. Right. You know, um, so we, we, we got that whole problem. On top of that, you know, um, Idaho is essentially a corporate state. You know, 100 percent. We have yeah. our arrangements with Simplot. Uh, Simplot is in partnership with Bear Monsanto. Monsanto has defined how agriculture education happens in the state of Idaho. I mean, literally. Hey, our, how dare you? Uh, they don't even go by Bear Monsanto anymore. It's just Bear now. It's it just bear. bear. 
By the way, also bear, also bear made Zyklon B for the Nazis. So fuck bear. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and this is who defines how agriculture is done in the state of Idaho. You know, if man, you Zyklon B guys. Yeah. Or corporatism or right there. friendly. You also, literally have to go to Oregon or Washington for an education on how to do regenerative ag because yeah. they will not teach it in Idaho agriculture. They're too busy funding the people who made Zyklon B and Agent Orange. Yeah. Uh, well, they're actually funding us to make sure that our farmers are only taught their way to farm. Um, if you ask me, that's not funding. If somebody gives me money or some object or something in exchange for my obsequious bootlicking and my falling in line, that's not giving me anything but a leash. It, you know, right there, right there. Uh, and really, that is where we are with that. 